Welcome to Culture Talk. This is the segment where we talk about culturally relevant topics that you can use to start conversations about your faith. I'm joined today with um, ethics professor and also a pastor for 20 years, George Haraxon. Thank you for joining us, George. Thank you for inviting me, Sandra. I'm really excited to talk about this important topic. Yes, we're here to talk about a recent Gallup poll, which found that for the first time in 80 years, church membership has actually dipped below 50%, so it's now below the majority. Can you explain what that percentage means? Yeah, we've seen a steady decline in, notice it says membership, not necessarily belief or religious belief, but we've seen this sort of 80-year decline in membership. Uh, the study, I think, said it we went from 69% in 1998 to 2000 uh, regarding membership um, to 40, down to 49% in 2018 and 2020. And the so-called nuns, N-O-N-E-S, those who don't have a, a religious affiliation or who don't claim one, um, went from 8% in 1998 to 2000. And I think it went up to like 21% in 2018 to 2020. So at the same time, 7 in 10 in the U.S. are affiliated with some type of organized religion, uh, but now less than half have a what we might call a formal membership or connection to churches. But remember also, it's not just Christian churches. The, uh, it has to do with synagogue uh, membership and membership uh, amongst the Islamic community. Right. And I think that's very helpful because for some reason, people tend to think that it's just specifically talking about Christian churches, but um, it's talking really ab about all religions. Um, and there's so there's one quick point here too. Um, we've also noticed in various other studies that there's also uh, a, a decline in formal membership in other areas of the culture as well, fraternal organizations, other civic organizations like Lions Club or, or what have you. So um, there's a broad cultural event going on. So, you know, part of the study, and I think we want to be careful that we're not panicking or anything. Um, but one of the things that is mentioned in the study is that it's possible that the 2020, well, can't really say 2020 pandemic because here we are in 2021, but that the pandemic uh, may have been one reason why there's a temporary decline. But they also state that they, they think a decline um, a continued decline is inevitable. So pandemic or not, they're saying that they think the decline is inevitable. Yeah, I think that's the case. Um, there was a study done uh, by some sociologists, Landon uh, Sch Schnabel and Sean Bach. They are at uh, Indiana University and Harvard University. And they make a distinction that I think is helpful. They talk about those who are moderate in their religion and those who are moderate, they don't have membership, et cetera. They don't attend weekly services and that that has declined since the 1980s and li largely will continue to. However, what they call intense religion, in which includes evangelicalism, uh, has, uh, are, uh, has either stayed the same or there, there's, a, there's some growth in that area. Um, so, People who have greater commitments, uh, attachments to the church, uh, we see those churches maintaining some membership, even possibly growing. And we also see a shift from people who might leave like a, a mainline church and who are more moderate sometimes then transfer over to a more intense religion, if you will, mm -hmm. to other types of churches. Interesting. So um, you're saying now like that, so in some cases, we'll see um, kind of an increase, but overall, we're seeing a decline. Yes. So I think that's I think that's something that people should be aware of, especially churches. And you, as a former pastor, pastor for over twenty years, um, I would love your insight on what you think um, churches can do to really encourage church membership as opposed to just church attendance. Yeah, that's a great question, and. Um... We, we actually know, and I think it's good for pastors and leaders to know this, we have some good empirical research on this, that research based off of what's called the General Sociological Survey, 
seems to demonstrate uh, strongly that uh, if you have a strong relationship, that there's a strong relationship between church attendance and Christian practice, that that's a well-established uh, connection. So the more people are connected, participating in church, um, the more they start to live out their Christian practices. Sociologist Robert uh, Withnow uh, found that attendees are more likely to look to God for strength if they're regular attenders uh, or church members. Uh, they're, they're, they tend to believe that God is watching over them. Uh, they carry their religious belief into other dealings in their life. They feel God's presence more. They find uh, their religious commitment comforting. They desire closeness to God, a whole host of things and, and practices. So I would put it this way, one's belonging, that membership, affects one's believing, which affects one's behavior. And that's really important. So I think leaders and churches can raise the expectation of membership, show its value, its importance, how it actually affects how we believe and how we behave. And we used to have, require a class for membership. Um, people who go through a process understanding what their expectations are, what the cost is, but also what the benefits are. Um, and encouraging ministry involvement. I'm wondering um, what you might say then for congregants, like how would you encourage congregants to help foster a more welcoming environment? I heard one pastor put it this way. He used the phrase, and this is in regards to kind of following Jesus and being a part of church. He said, be one, build one, bring one. And the idea there is you got to be a disciple a follower, a student of Jesus, it's important for you to be investing in other followers of Jesus to build them up. But this is an important part, I think, bringing, bringing someone, inviting someone with you, uh, this makes you be the host or hostess, if you will. And you can create a welcoming environment because you're the host or the hostess, and you've invited this person to this church, and you can introduce them to other people and show them around. Or if it's just not, it has to do with the physical location, introducing them to other people. And so that does create a much more welcoming environment. Some of you know, I used to work uh, for Disneyland Hotel, you know, and, and we we always talked about that, that issue of hospitality. Uh, but that is a value that's noted within the New Testament quite a number of times, that we are to become a hospitable people, showing hospitality, especially to the stranger. Wonderful. Well, I think it's always great to be hospitable, and hopefully that will help people to explore um, church membership. So thanks so much for that, George. If you'd like to hear more from George Raxon, go to reasons.org and search for George Raxon.